Hi, and welcome back to another episode of The Vixen Voice. So today we're meeting and talking to my good friend, Meg Gill. I say good friend, even though I met her, what, like two, three weeks ago? So, <laughs> <We're>... <laughs> Although it feels like two, three years ago. <laughs> I know, I know. We went to dinner last Friday night and they literally had to kick us out of the restaurant because we were still talking. So Closed you know, it down. <laughs> <laughs> we, we definitely closed it down. So anyway, I share that with you because I know a lot of us find ourselves at a time in life where it's like, how do I meet new people? And they are everywhere. Like, I can't believe the amazing friends I've met on my journey in the last year. And I feel like when you're in a journey to evolve, so right now I'm evolving in multiple ways, building a new business, living in a new city, and my spiritual journey. And when you're in you know, as you evolve, I feel like the right people for that part of your journey or maybe for the rest of your life come in. So I just like to share that to really encourage you, be open to who's around you. I mean, I joined a Facebook group the other day and this woman said, we have to be friends. We have so much in common. I'm like, cool, DM me. Let's hop on a Zoom, right? So um, I just think that especially post COVID, everyone's so hungry for that human connection. So be open. Um, your your new best friend is right around the corner. So that being said, Meg, I'm going to dive in. What I love to share with the audience is what I love about you and why I have you on the episode. And then I'll leave it to you to share your story and journey. But Meg is a certified life coach, a Reiki healer, and a quantum healing hypnosis, hypnotist. Oh, okay, I bumbled that. Did I get that one right? Okay, cool. Yeah, that and works. The, <laughs> And she is also still working nine to five at a record label. So like many of you, you know, she's doing her nine to five gig and doing her passion on the side. So today we're going to talk about how she balances all of that. Plus being a mother again, like many of you, along with what the heck is quantum healing hypnosis. So I'm super excited to dig in, um, but I'll share with you. As I said, I met Meg, I think it was two weeks ago and we were at a networking event and I, I don't love networking. I like to hang out with people that, you know, that I love in my spare time, which I don't have a ton of, but this is a specific group and I always meet someone interesting. So my goal is always, okay, let's go there and meet that one person, right? And so a few weeks ago, Meg was that one person for me. Um, I happened to sit next to her and just the connections we had were mind blowing. So you're gonna see that she's a very heart-filled, curious, open-minded woman who's really like searching to live her best life. So I'm sure you're going to love her as much as I do. With that being said, Meg, I'll turn it over to you. What I love to ask the first time on The Vixen Voice is, can you share with us a pivotal moment in your life that made, you know, that created this amazing woman we see sitting here before us today? I think there are many pivotal moments in Love life <laughs> that makes you into a woman as you grow along the years. Um, first off, thank you, April, for having me. I'm so happy to be here with your audience. I think it's about life experiences, which is what led me to want to sit with others and to be a life coach and help others who maybe are currently going through obstacles or challenges in their life that I could help them through. Uh, I seem to have come to where I am today by having experiences of loss, of, um, of moments of change in my, in my career, uh, challenges among family dynamic, uh, friendships, uh, marriage, divorce. So I think it's the way that I chose to rise from those mm -hmm. situations. I think in every, in every lifetime that we have, which we'll dive into that more with QHHT, but mm -hmm. with, with, the lifetimes that we have, we are given lessons and it's how we choose to grow. So we can either have the decision to sit back and let something defeat us and accept what is as it is, or you can take that step back and see it from a different perspective and choose to rise, choose to grow from it, apply the lessons. And that also comes with having to remove certain aspects, including people from your life in order to grow. And that's really hard, but it's also the most 
beautiful moments that I've experienced that I think has led me to where I am now by having to make those difficult decisions of removing um, situations that don't serve my higher purpose or removing people that, that no longer um, help me in, in my higher purpose as well. And those are painful, but once you work through that and you see the light at the end of the tunnel, um, it really is beautiful just to actually sit in your growth. I would say that even, you know, I'm 35. I would say that even five years ago, I can look back and, and say I'm a completely different person even from five years ago, just because of life experience. Yeah, I totally agree. And what's interesting is we all have a different life experience. Um, mm -hmm. And so this is what I've been very curious about. I, I just did a panel on talking about spirituality versus religion versus believing in God, you know, different ways that people discuss their belief system. And the challenge is that we all define these terms differently based on our experience. So it's really important in most conversations, I think, to realize that the other person doesn't have the same perspective as you, even if they seem to have similar belief system, right, or completely opposite, but they're viewing it from a different place because they've had a different life journey. And, you know, I think this is how we can enter into compassionate and loving relationships. And I know, you know, Meg, one of your big passions is supporting other female entrepreneurs. So how does that, how does that whole conversation play in with, I mean, I do think women supporting women is so important. Mm -hmm. It's also, uh, you know, to your point of, you know, approaching certain life experiences from different perspectives. Absolutely. Having mm -hmm. compassion behind that. We all have life experiences and coming from different places, different backgrounds and how we handle those. But it is also on an energetic frequency on top of that. So really... Mm -hmm we're matching the same energy, we're matching energy. Um, so I can have that compassion and sit with someone. Maybe I haven't experienced losing, you know, say a brother, for example, mm -hmm. but I've lost a sister. You know, those are gonna be two different dynamic relationships, but that energetic frequency of loss, I, mm -hmm. you know, we can sit and we can match that and there's that equal understanding. but. Um, and I think that also can be applied to supporting other women as well. Women supporting women is one of the biggest drives and, and the biggest um, passion that I think that I have. Anytime I'm in a room of women who are discussing their achievements, mm -hmm. their struggles, everyone can relate to that. And to see mm -hmm. someone from, from where I am right now, working my nine to five, but also building my, my business, I can sit in a room of women like yourself, April, and see people who are, none of us are on the same path. So it's, a, it's a, it, we should never compare ourselves. We're, we all have a unique pathway, right? So to compare ourselves is actually doing ourselves a disservice because mm -hmm. where you excel, I may not, I may have different talents, but I think what it comes down to is empowering each other to work together and if we can work together, then we can build something pretty solid because where your talents are and where my talents are, I mean, that could really build a, a full success, right? So, yeah, I love that. Last year I said was my year of collaboration. Not that I stopped collaborating, but that was like the focus last year. And, and honestly, that's what led me to so many beautiful relationships. I mean, the co-facilitator of my Vixen mastermind I met because she applied to be in the mastermind. And I was like, you know what? I feel like there's something more here. Let me sleep on this. And I came back and I said, Hey, how would you like to, you know, help me facilitate this because you know it was a year-long program last year now people can join for a quarter at a time but most people stay in for the year and i was just like i'd really like a partner in this because like what if one month i'm not able to run the meeting or we meet every week right so to make sure that we could always follow up with our promises made to our clients which is extremely important to me and the crazy thing is here we are one year later and she's literally one of my best friends like we tell each other I love you when we get off the phone just like I tell my family right and that was if I did not have that openness to collaboration like I never planned to have a co-facilitator I just met this person I said 
hey, I'm really good working with the entrepreneur. You're really good working with leadership teams. What if we came together and then we can serve our potential clients and our clients better, right? Because we're bringing mm -hmm. more parts to the table. Um, and I know you live what you're sharing because you've already told me about one of your good friends who does similar work to you. But, you know, you, you really... Uh, complement each other in different ways. And you told me, wow, if we came together, we'd be a powerhouse. So I love that. So how do you look for these collaborative environments in your life? In my life, I feel like the majority of it is coincidence or synchronicity. This yep. is just the universe <laughs> pulling people together, right? So an example I can give you is the individual you were just referencing, uh, her name is Elise, and I actually, she's my co-host. Uh, we're co-hosts on our own podcast. Love and it. we met, mm -hmm, so we met through our mentor that we shared. I was looking to go um, experience Reiki with a new practitioner. We shared a mentor. My mentor linked me up with her. I went to her, and we were friends since then. And it came down to a point where we were having such in-depth conversations that we realized we need to share this. I bet so many other people either don't know about this content or mm -hmm. are having similar conversations and we should unify that and, and, and kind of branch out and either educate or let people know, hey, you're not alone in your thinking. There are other people and there are books on this and this is how you can grow from this. So I think just finding collaborative efforts is be, finding, finding people who are like-minded but who also have different perspectives, right? Yeah. You want to have that open-mindedness. So I could have an opinion on a subject matter um, with Elise, my co-host, and she matches it. She sees it. She understands it. She's like, but have you thought of it this way? Mm -hmm. And, it, you know, that collaboration, it's not always about, hey, I'm going to work with someone who's just like me. Actually, collaboration is better whenever you're working with someone who's quite different from you in ways yeah. of thinking. Yeah. So... There's that like-mindedness where you and I met, uh -huh. you know, we, we matched on that similarity, but you and I approach things differently as well, but we appreciate that with one another. Yeah. Yeah. I would agree. It's interesting because, um, you know, I started the Vixen Voice because I had been in masterminds in my life where a lot of times the leader would kind of, you know, pick our brains and then use it to build their brand or what they, how they were serving people. And I, I kind of didn't, I, I mean, I appreciate it because it's the ripple effect, right? But I also didn't like it because it's like, well, if you're using my idea, I should get credit for it, right? So I created the Vixen Voice because I was like, as my clients are great at something or have a great idea, instead of me adopting it and sharing it with the world, I'm going to have them on the Vixen Voice and like, it's a win for them, it's a win for our audience, and it's a win for me, right? And so I think that's true collaboration where everyone wins. But anyway, and I wanted to have a place where women understood they weren't alone in how they were feeling in this journey, and they were inspired to think outside of the box. So that was my initial, and I wanted to say whatever the heck I wanted after being highly <laughs> regulated as a financial advisor on a TV show. Doing live TV when you're highly regulated is an interesting experience. <laughs> Let me put it that way, right? I, I felt I my bow down chakra to you. was very closed. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, God, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> So, oh. so I was like, so that was kind of my thinking, like this was kind of really just my pet project for those purposes. But a side thing that has come up is, you know, I also guest on like four to six podcasts a month. And so when I'm a guest or when I'm a host, I learn so much from the other host or from my guest. And it's such a beautiful experience. And sometimes it's like what you said, maybe I thought we thought the same or believed the same, but they were slightly different than me and it tweaked my belief system. So here's an example that, for your audience. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. And then we get to experience it too. So mm -hmm. it's so cool because everyone's winning because we're all evolving together. Um, but yeah, I'd love, I, I want to come back to Reiki because I learned something interesting about Reiki today. We can dig in. So this is one of those moments where I learned because as you know, I finished basic training in my shamanic training. And, you know, I say I'm a shamanic spiritual healer of God because 
God's doing the work, not me. I'm just the vessel. And there are many healing modalities, right? I mean, and I want, and we're going to get into your quantum healing hypnosis. So I've had difficulty when people ask me, oh, you're a spiritual healer because there's so many nuances to spiritual healing. I'm sure you can relate, right? Do you have oh, that yeah. same experience when you're asked about your healing work? Absolutely. And I think that's why I'm more specific of what I do yes. because it is, it is so, I guess, nuanced. It's so broad mm-hmm. of, you know, when you, when you sit down at a networking event with other spiritual healers, you will sit down and be like, what do you do? What do you do? Yeah. What do you, there's so <laughs> many, there's so many different avenues. There's so many different modalities just to work with energy. That's really what it is mm-hmm. when it comes, like the foundation is you are working with energy. It comes down to quantum physics at the end of the day. I mean, it matches with science for people who need science based (laughs) energy is science based. Yeah. This is a real thing. (laughs) So as a spiritual healer, there are so many different ways that you can work with energy in so many different ways. I think it depends on the person we call them the sitter. So that's the client. That's, that's the person who's coming for the healing. It depends on what they're looking for specifically. So I know Reiki is very, very different. Mm -hmm. Um, An ancient Japanese form of healing, energy healing, compared to the um, shamanic work that you do. Mm -hmm. You know, completely different. And I've Mm -hmm. experienced both, completely, vastly different. But it has the same effects, Mm -hmm. right? At the end of the day... I don't know that it all has the same effects. I don't think I'd agree with that. I think you can heal on different levels. I think energetically, yes, it can have the same effects, but there are like five levels of healing, right? And so I'm not, I understand what you're saying, helping us heal, helping us peel out negativity, yes. Um, but again, I'm not sure. And, and again, I'm still on this journey and learning, um, but I'm not sure it all has the same effect. And so that's why I think when you said it's really important to know what you're searching for, which by the way, in 2012, when I said I need a spiritual healer, it's because I saw Jeff Lewis on Bravo TV, go to a spiritual healer. And I was feeling numb and he was like screaming. It was like a shamanic healer. And I was like, yeah, I need that. And I had no idea what I was searching for. Right. And I, I remember I had a client, a financial planning client, and I knew she did some kind of work. I said, Hey, I'm looking for a spiritual healer. Can you help me? And she said, Oh, we meet every Sunday show up. And they did open heart Reiki, right. Which was totally different than what I'd seen on TV. And so all I knew is I slept better that night. I had no desire to look at my phone. I popped out of bed the next day and I was like, whatever they did to me, I'm going back next Sunday, right? So Mm -hmm. I I, I think a lot of people at the beginning of the journey are there, but the more specific you get about it, the the more it helps later on. Does that make sense? And so I would say go to where you feel attracted because what I had done there is totally different than what I do today, as you mentioned. And uh, and at that point in my life, I talked about the universe and then I talked about the quantum field and now, you know, I'm back to God. And so that also differs like in what you seek out in healing, in my opinion. Um, mm-hmm. Because as I say, I'm a spiritual healer through God. Now I had a client on Sunday who doesn't believe in God. She still got cleaned up, right? Like it's not judgment on a mind part I'm I'm here to do that work but that's you know Christ consciousness is the modality doing the healing that I'm doing if that makes sense which is yep and I completely agree with you with what you're saying as well I mean I started my journey with the basis of acupuncture and acupuncture led me to seek out Reiki and I thought well what's Reiki this is cool I want to try this out and that's what and that's when I moved to Nashville I thought you would think you know living in California you would (laughs) That would be the basis of your journey with spirituality, but it actually happened here in Nashville. Mm -hmm. My first Reiki session when I sat with someone, uh, with a practitioner and it, it, that's what really initiated me into my own journey. Never once did I think I was going to sit with clients and be the person to offer healing. So it's wild how our journey leads us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I mean, keep going, but I'm just like, I'm, I'm having thoughts coming to me. Well, 
experiences and thoughts coming to me because I try not to get too mental. Um, but I, I like to rely on my intuition. But, you know, what I was going to share is I kind of thought what we what the what what I did was different than Reiki because I thought Reiki was a little bit more just energy and you know like we're yes. a little higher frequency doing Christ consciousness and That's it's right. God doing the work yeah. and I actually learned today on the podcast from one of my fellow healers that she went to the Buddhist temple where Reiki was downloaded and went inside and that it was a very spiritual experience. So I do think it's all a lot closer than we think. So I want to correct myself on what I said earlier. Um, it's just, you know, I'm still learning and growing in this process as well. And I think, you know, that's what, that's why it becomes important to like, thank your ego for protecting you, but let it go. Because if I were stuck in my ego, I wouldn't correct myself. Right. But yeah. like, I yeah. don't know. <laughs> and, and with, with QHHT, we actually tell the ego to step aside. Oh, I love it. Yeah. So I, I understand what you're saying. Yeah. And I'm still learning too. I think we're all students. We'll be forever students. None of us are really masters, yeah. I guess, unless you create a technique like Dolores Cannon did with QHHT, but yeah. I don't know. And yeah, but does she become a master just because of that? Because uh, that's true. I yeah. feel we're not masters until we're dead and we have risen to that highest level. And I'm not ready to right? be dead yet. So I'm okay right. not being a master yeah. personally. I'm like, Same I don't thing. know everything. That's okay. I have a direct yep. connection to someone who does know everything. So I kind of yep. check in when I I'm need fine to, being right? a conduit. Yep. I'm fine being <laughs> yes. a catalyst. I'm fine with it. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Like I have a pretty great life. I want to keep experiencing this for a little bit longer. But mm. that leads me, tell us a little bit more. So I actually did not, I know Dolores Cannon, um, and I did not know that was the the development of quantum healing hypnosis. So talk to us about QHHT. Can you um, share with us, you know, if I were walking in for a first session or interested, like what would you share with me about what you do and who it can help? Sure. So, so first off, I do have to give, um, uh, Dolores Cannon, the respect that she deserves. Uh, she passed away in uh, 2014, but since the mm -hmm. 1960s, she had been doing research and developing this technique that works in the um, somnambulistic state. So mm -hmm. this is, there are four states of the mind. This mm -hmm. specific state you are only in twice a day. This is right before you consciously wake up mm -hmm. and right when you're falling asleep. This is whenever the ego steps aside and your mind is open. Hmm. So this is a conscious state, but we're not aware of what's happening. So she actually started on an army base being a hypnotherapist uh, to soldiers. Um, she did anything to help with, you know, depression, weight loss, you know, the, the basis hypnotherapy that everyone knows what, what it serves. And she realized that once some of them started falling into deeper trances and deeper states, and that's whenever interesting things started to happen, like past lives. And so mm -hmm. she was guided into this technique that she developed, and she taught over a decade to other people around the world. So as of 2022, there were 4,000 practitioners and only 200 of them were men. So this is a female founded technique. The majority of practitioners mm -hmm. are female. We're working with divine energy. We're working with divine feminine energy as well. So the majority of my clients are women. I have worked with men, but the majority of clients that seek me out are women. So if you were to come and sit with me, we at first sit for a little while and just talk about what led you to book a session? You know, what are you wanting to get out of it? And we talk about your life. We talk about maybe certain, certain um, things that might've happened that maybe you want more clarity on. You know, you come to a session with questions of what you're wanting to ask. If you could ask 10 questions to a source that's all knowing, what would you want to ask is basically mm -hmm. what that is. So once we're done speaking, we will, we will sit and we will go into, I will walk through hypnosis and I will guide you um, into that trance, into that, that third state of the mind. 
Mm -hmm. And from there, the client is placed either in this lifetime or a lifetime that came before this to teach them or reveal a lesson that is applied mm -hmm. to why they came. Now, this is all information that we have. This is in, in the, the deeper depths of our mind. This is, you already have it. Mm -hmm. So QHHT basically is, is telling you, you are able to heal yourself. Mm -hmm. If you push the human aside, if you put, push the ego aside, you have the capability to heal yourself. If you're coming in with a chronic illness, if you're coming in with knee pain or uh, migraines, for example, this is a practice that allows you and your body to remember that you can actually heal yourself. This is connected to trauma either in this lifetime or the lifetimes before. And so that's what this work does. It dives down, it finds a lifetime that is applicable and relevant to why you're there. You walk through that past life, you learn the lessons. And then from there, we go and we speak to source or subconscious or what Dolores Cannon calls SC, the subconscious. This is a, a deeper level where um, you're basically going to a source that has all of the records, has all the information um, for all of your lives and all the lives that have ever lived. And this is where she got a lot of the content for her books. Um, mm -hmm. She's an author for, gosh, I don't even know how many books, maybe like 19 of them. Mm -hmm. So, um, a lot of the information from the, the clients that she sat with, uh, has taught her about, you know, how planets were formed and, uh, you know, uh, how time is, is a concept that man created time does not exist or multi-dimensions. I mean, it really goes out there. It really goes out there. So once we get to the SC, this is where the healing, that's what we want to get to. This is where the healing comes in. So this is where we ask for healing and we do a body scan and we can ask questions and it's the inner depths. This is knowledge that you already have within you, but this is the SC is the connection to higher source, which mm -hmm. resides in all of us. Mm -hmm. And so whenever they come out of this session, there's healing that takes place during the session and a few days after as it integrates and then a recording is sent with them as well. So they can actually listen back to it. The hip, the hypnotherapy part is not in that. So they're not going to go back into trance, but they will be able to go back and re-listen to what happened. And they, um, actually get additional healing that way once they listen back to it. So it's a beautiful, it's beautiful to sit with someone and help them through that. It's, it releases a lot of energy blockages and it just helps them move forward. It helps them see from a different perspective. I love that. Yeah. Healing is so important. <laughs> so oh, yeah. important. Um, mm -hmm. Actually, something came up today. My uh, Someone in my family, I won't even say which, had reached out to me because they feel they need help healing and getting off some medications they're on. And I think I was telling you the story at dinner. I'm like, be careful if you ask me for it to help because we're going all in because we're going to oh, solve yeah. this problem, right? Like, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I'm not giving up. So it's interesting because I, I don't offer the help. I, I am a, um, I'm a projector in human design. So I try to wait to be invited in because as a projector, I can see through to the core and sometimes people are not ready for that. So uh, that if you ask- so true. Yeah, if you ask my coaching clients, healing clients, like they'll, and, and then I'm an eight on the Enneagram, which is a challenger. So I do lovingly challenge. It's definitely mama bear energy, but we're going in. But um, I do, have you been to Therify Nashville? Anyway, I go there and I get quantum um, healing work and not because I have anything wrong with me. And also I'm very emotionally balanced because of my healing work. And I've had a healer, you know, since 2019. I just like going there because it really relaxes me. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. But anyway, I was I was realizing that I think I need to get my family member who asked for help there as well, because there's some there's some things that that modality will help with. Um, because also the challenges, you know, being a healer, um, even though, for example, you know, I'm just a conduit for God's work or Christ consciousness. 
still my human bias comes in when it's a family member or someone I love. So I am not going to be the best conduit for that person, right? And so mm -hmm. it's really great to, you know, I have a whole family of healers that do what I do. I have friends like you, so then I can refer out. I mean, for example, my mom won't trust anyone but me, so I have done healings on her, but you know, I, I really do try. So what's your experience in working with people you're close with? Do you find the same thing or do you find that you're able to stay focused? I'm able to stay focused in the experience that I've had so far. I know one yeah. of, honestly, one of my most challenging um, inductions was my mom. Mm -hmm. That was the most challenging, but I also know how her mind works. Mm -hmm. um, you know, she doesn't trust people easily, so she's yeah. not going to trust the process. And that kind of goes back. So with hypnotherapy, usually individuals who are right-brained can go in, you know, people who meditate, creative, yeah. you know, open-minded those are people who can easily just set that ego aside. Left brain, more analytical, more logical, mm -hmm. takes a little bit. Everyone can be put under, but it will just take, it sometimes takes a little bit longer. So that was the instance with my mom. So that was a little bit more challenging, but I almost find it with the work that I do, I almost find it easier to work with people I already know because I know their background. And mm -hmm. they, um, and I say that because the individual has to be comfortable with you in order to get yeah. into that vulnerable state, which is why I sit with people for so long before we go in. Yeah. I want them to feel comfortable. We sit up, we sit and we talk about a lot of deep things and most mm -hmm. of it's pretty traumatic, you know, yeah. but there's that safe space. That's what, that's where the compassion comes in. Yeah. Right. Upsetting it's so funny because we have a healing specifically for people that are too mental or analytical and it involves walnuts. So we're like trying to crack the walnut, right? Like get in yes. there <laughs> because a, yes. lot of, a lot of the work I do involves nature. Um, so it, it is true. And, you know, mm -hmm. in, in different lifetimes, you're born into different levels of mental state or whatever. And, you know, I... I struggle with this as a coach because, for example, I do my three-day abundance mindset, as you know, challenge, um, because I know you have to go beyond mindset. That's that's the first layer of healing, right? But so much of humanity is addicted to their negative thoughts and negative emotions now that we start with the negative thoughts. But that is not actually the end result because mindset is very popular right now. It's very trending, but understand mindset is the first step, right? We have to go deeper for the full healing. And so um, I struggle a little bit to balance that, but I realize that I'm meeting my clients or people who want to work with me where they're at and that's fine. And we're taking them along the journey. I just don't mm -hmm. want them to think that's the end result. Okay, we're gonna fix your mindset and be good, right? Like it happens yeah. on a much deeper level. So Meg, I know you don't have much time today, so I wanna bring us in and honor your time. But every time I have a first guest, as you know, I could talk to you for hours. So we'll definitely have you back on for a panel or just to chat with you again. Um, and I can't wait to be on your podcast. So first of all, before I wrap up with my last questions, can you share with our audience? I'm sure they love you just like I do. Where can they find you and how can they follow you? Um, and how can they connect with you if they wanna try the QA? HHT. Sure, I'd be more than happy to share that. So they can find me on Instagram. My handle is Meg underscore Gill underscore. I have a link there. So if they do want to book a session or if they just want to reach out, we can always jump on a call as well. That's the best way to get a hold of me. I also co host a podcast called The Connection Podcast. So that's another mm -hmm. way that they could reach out. Um, it's at The Connection Pod on Instagram. So those are the two best ways to get a hold of me. And uh, we can share availability and go from there. I love it. And we'll have all that in our show notes. If you have not gone to the vixengathering.com slash podcast, go there now and subscribe because when you do that, all of this cool info shows up in your inbox every Tuesday and Thursday as our episodes go live. But you can also go to Apple, Spotify, or YouTube and find this information as well as on vixengathering.com where we have full show notes. So we'll make it super easy for you to connect with Meg. Awesome. 
awesome. Well, Meg, I love having you on today. Before I let you go, I have a question for you because of the Vixen voice, you know, we're very into getting into our feminine essence and energy, um, just like you work with the divine feminine. By the way, most healers in my classes are female too. So women are more natural born healers. It doesn't mean that, I mean, my teacher is a man and my healer is a man, so men can do the work. Um, but it's, it's more of a feminine energy to do the healing work. And what I actually learned is like, as women, we can, um, actually naturally bless and curse people. So you have to be very careful with what you say, right? The blessing part is beautiful. The other one, (laughs) not so much. Um, (laughs) so anyway, when do you feel your most feminine? When do you feel your feminine essence flowing? When I am working with other women. Love it. Awesome. Yep. And then yep. what color would you put to your feminine essence? Purple. It always has been purple. I love it. I love it. <laughs> awesome. Mine's like a purple magenta color. Um, oh, I love so it. I love that. Yeah, we're close. Yep. I'm a shade off. <laughs> cool. <laughs> So final thing is I always share that the world needs more love. And I, if you're listening, I want to challenge you. How can you show up, first of all, in more love for yourself? And today we're talking about connecting with other women. So showing up with more love for the women in your life and the world in general. Meg, if you had a message for our audience and for all the amazing, awesome women out there listening, what would your message be? Lift each other up show Mm. appreciation. I don't care if you're already friends with someone and sending them a text and just say, Hey, you know what? I just want you to know, I appreciate you. I wouldn't be able to get through these past three months without you kind of thing. Or if you're out and about and you see someone you don't know and say, she's wearing a beautiful dress, compliment her. Mm -hmm. You never know what someone's going through. That could completely change her day around and maybe make her motivated to do the thing that she's been pushing off. Right. Or she's been scared Mm -hmm. to do. So I think just lifting each other up every day. Yeah. Yeah. And I want to add, again, my Enneagram comes in. I want to challenge you if you're listening, because this is something I constantly work on, by the way. When you're on the receiving end of that support or compliment, say thank you. (laughs) Learn to be gracefully receiving. Because when you don't, you're blocking their energy. You're blocking that love energy they're sending towards you. And I think we've all had that moment where someone didn't accept a gift or a compliment or something we were giving. And it doesn't feel good when someone doesn't accept, right? So I Mm -hmm. think we've been socialized to believe it's humble or self deferential to not receive that gracefully. But what you're doing is actually harming the person giving. So instead be open to receiving, even if you just manage to say, thank you so much, um, and move on. And I love that. And that's how, you know, as we know our energy, you know, when you're three to six, within three to six feet of a person, you can feel their energy. Um, and it's so interesting because now I'm starting to feel it on zoom too so I think things are shifting uh but before I don't know if that was the case so you know we can feel each other's energies we do affect each other and so be careful how you're showing up in the world and try to show up in love and and I love what you said support other women give them compliments genuine compliments right Mm -hmm. (laughs) and Mm -hmm. and we really can change the world through these little actions it's a ripple effect and it's so powerful so meg thank you so much for being here today i'm sure i will talk to you again soon and thank you for having me Yes, love it. And again, if you want more of Meg, as I'm sure you do, check it out in the show notes or go subscribe so it gets delivered to your inbox. And don't forget the Vixen Voice. Every episode is on YouTube as well. Uh, So if you want to go see our beautiful faces, you can check us out on YouTube. Have a wonderful day, everyone, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye, guys.